Got another set of questions for the alkenes and addition polymers playlist. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start. So when something like menthol is heated with this acid catalyst, it's going to remove a water molecule. So you can see I've highlighted the OH group and the hydrogen it takes to make the water has to come from an adjacent carbon. So we can either take this hydrogen here or one of these here. And what that's going to do is put a double bond here or here. So the two products that could form are going to look like these and hopefully you appreciate that this one here is A. Moving on to the next question. So a sigma bond is the direct overlap of orbitals between the bonding atoms, whereas a pi bond involves the sideways overlap between p orbitals of the bonding atoms. To help with the next part, I've drawn up a um, displayed formula for beta-1,3-diene. So the sigma bonds are all in red and the pi bonds are in black. So we've got nine sigma bonds and two pi bonds. Moving on to the mechanism. So the HBr molecule needs a dipole, slightly positive hydrogen, slightly negative bromine. A pair of electrons move out from the pi bond to that slightly positive hydrogen and that breaks the bond between the H and the Br by heterolytic fission. Now the question asks for the major organic product. So I've drawn both of the carbocation intermediates that would form in this reaction. This one here is going to lead to the major product, and that's because this is a secondary carbocation intermediate, whereas this one's only a primary one. So this isn't as stable as this. We're kind of answering the next part of the question here, but I think it's worth, while I'm doing the mechanism, to explain this little bit here. The mechanism finishes off by a pair of electrons going from the lone pair on the Br- ion, and that's going to generate this bond between the C and the Br. So in terms of the answer for the next part of the question, we just need to say that the major product forms from the more stable secondary carbocation intermediate. Moving on to the next part, so we're told butyl-1,3-diene reacts with an excess of hydrogen bromide forming a mixture of saturated organic products. So the fact that we're getting saturated products means that both of the double bonds are going to react and become CC single bonds. So because there's two double bonds, we can react this with two moles of HBr. So in terms of possible products that will form, well you could put the bromines at either end of the chain. So we'd get that product there. We could put a bromine here and a bromine at the end. Obviously that gives that one there. Or the two bromines from the two HBRs could go here and here. So the total possible number of products is three. Moving on to part C, so just a memory test for the definition. Stereoisomerism is the same structural formula but different spatial arrangements of atoms or groups. And the next part, is the student right to say that butyl-1,3-diene can show stereoisomerism? Well, the answer is no, because this CC single bond, it's a sigma bond, it can rotate. So if you just spin that round like that, you get this. And moving on to part D about this diels alder reaction. So we've been given an equation, and we've just got to add curly arrows to show how the electrons have moved around. So... They've supplied us with this pair of electrons here, this curly arrow. So the pi electron pairs obviously moved from the double bond and generated a single bond here. So that's that there. So to turn this bond into a single bond and create a double bond here, we obviously need a curly arrow to go up like that. And then to generate this part here, we need to take a pair of electrons from the pi bond and move them to that space there and obviously that's going to generate this part of the structure. So for the next part of the question we've got a very very similar situation going on so all I've done is highlighted in yellow the different part of um, this reaction compared to the one we were given so I'll put the curly arrows in just to show you how it works but we didn't have to do that we just got to come up with the structure so obviously that's going to still do that and create a bond here that's going to do that 
and create a double bond there and that's going to do that and connect here so the product is going to look like that so i'll do exactly the same for the next one so we've got a triple bond in the middle here so if you think there's a double bond and then this extra bond here then we've got a couple of methyl groups top and bottom so if we just do what we've done before curly arrow goes there that'll jump up to there and that'll go to there so there's the product there so you've got a double bond here because we've got three pairs of electrons there and one pairs come out um, so there's still two pairs there we've got that double bond 